Everybody is talking about how this next year people around the world are going to go to elections. They're incredibly important elections. I guess, I guess potentially the United States is the most important election. You tell me. But The Economist is calling it the biggest election year in history. How do you look at it? I, I agree. I think this is a year in which probably democracy as we understand it will either continue and improve or it will tip over into something which is no longer recognizable. We have more or less real elections in India. We have more or less real elections in the U.S. We have fake elections in, in Russia. And we have a war between Russia and Ukraine, which is largely about whether democracies can survive and defend themselves. So I think people are right to think that 2024 is going to be a kind of turning point one way or the other. So let me ask you about the threat to democracy or where democracy is most challenged, as you just said, you know, on the battlefront in Ukraine. This looks to be going incredibly badly for Ukraine right now. And it's a shock, frankly. It's a shock to the system after we, the public, and we, the press, have been reporting for years that the U.S. and Europe has been saying, for as long as it takes, we will help Ukraine defend itself. And that all seems to be thrown up in, in smoke right now, with the Congress, with the EU, either not or delaying crucial aid, with Russia clearly making some advances on the battlefield. What is the most important thing that needs to be done now? But just a couple of quick things in the background here. The first thing to remember is that the Ukrainians, from the beginning of the war to now, have been doing incredibly well with whatever they've been provided with. And even this last year, and even these last few months and weeks, they've been extracting extraordinary Russian casualties, and they've been doing a very good job at stopping these huge Russian barrages of missiles and drones. They're the reliable piece in all of this. We're the unreliable piece. And as you say, that's the shocking part. It's shocking not just because Ukrainians are defending democracy and the rule of law. It's also shocking because the people who oppose democracy and the rule of law, not only in Moscow, but also in Beijing and elsewhere, are looking very carefully on what happens. So what needs to happen is, from our point of view, is actually very simple. We need to unblock the aid for Ukraine, which will allow the Ukrainians to defend themselves and win this war. The ironic thing here is that this would be very easy for us. It's just not very much money from our point of view. The weapons that we send are largely weapons we wouldn't use anyway and would have to decommission. We won't even notice whether we do this or not um, from, from the point of view of domestic politics, but it will change the history of the world. That's the striking thing at the beginning of 2024. So basically, you're, you're alluding, I think, to uh, political gamesmanship in Congress. And I want to know whether this affects Something very optimistic you said a year or so ago, that Russia is in retreat, China has peaked, and Ukraine is, is going to win. Would you reassess that statement, given where each of those countries are right now? I, I think it's very wise of you to make that connection, because it's, it, this all depends on us, right? So, you know, the, the problem with making predictions is that you, you have to kind of depend upon what your own people are going to do. If we continue, we the U.S., we the Germans, we the EU, continue to supply Ukraine, they will win this war. The narrative now is that things are going well for Russia, but things are actually going very badly for Russia. They're losing huge numbers of troops. Putin has problems at home. They can't keep this up indefinitely. The question is whether we can. And as you say, this has to do not just with Moscow, but with Beijing. If the Chinese see the Americans and the Europeans choosing to lose in Ukraine for no reason, that is certainly emboldening and certainly increases the risk dramatically of a conflict over Taiwan. Supporting Ukraine is the easy way for us to reduce the risk of a war with China. And that's one more reason why it's so befuddling that we're not doing it.